Uh, I'm pretty new to that. Uh, you know, that concept is pretty new to me. Um, that, that's an initiative that's through the Greater Cleveland Partnership and, um, and the Convention and Visitors Bureau. Th there are a lot of different um, organizations within the Greater Cleveland Partnership. The, the partnership is one of the organizations that we're working with to make this project happen. So that's a, that's a much higher level sort of branding uh, identity uh, project for the city and the region. Um, this is sort of a subset of it, uh, but th they have a lot going on there. Um, there. One project is the medical mart that's going on. This is a project that's going on, convention center project that's going on. So these are all subsets of a larger strategy to kind of rebrand, create a new identity for the region. Okay, well that's, that's my next question is there, there is a lot going on and at what point is the, um, the energy spreading itself too thin where, okay, we're trying to call Cleveland, uh, you know, a, a new center of design. If, if, if mm -hmm. you know, when, when people say Milan, you don't think of Milan for, for their cappuccino or anything. You think of them for their design period. Right. Um, can Cleveland at, at simultaneously be, be the Milan and the Paris and the London and the <laughs> Berlin and the, and the Adelaide and the, you know, and, and the Tokyo? when you've got so many disparate groups trying to say, okay, we're going, we're going to focus all of our energy on making Cleveland synonymous with uh, industrial innovation. Mm -hmm. um, at, at what point do all these initiatives, is, is, there, is there an overall planning, um, um, an overall plan uh, that, that would unite all these? Um, well, th this goes to the question of the overall vision. Um, it, it, honestly, I think one of the things in this city is that um, a lot of people are tired of waiting for someone at a higher level to do something. Uh, and so a lot of people on a much lower level are trying to do things. And um, it's, uh, you know, it, it could be a patchwork, and it could be a really nice patchwork. Uh, you know, I go to, uh, you know, you can go to, Manhattan and neighborhoods differ dramatically from place to place. Uh, you know, is it the best use of energy and resources to pursue five different paths? No, but you know, people really want to do something, and I think they're tired of waiting. Well, sure, the, the shotgun technique has has a, a more chances of, of success, even if each of those chances isn't isn't as great. It's it's worthy. It, um, it is, and in fact, the the. Um, you know, again, the, the basis of this concept is, you know, we do this already. We just spread it out so, so thin over such a large area that it doesn't really have any identity. Okay, my, my final question is, um, what is it about the design program uh, at, at, uh, that you mentioned earlier that mints some of the most sought-after talent? How did that happen in Cleveland? What was the magical ingredient in Cleveland that made that here? Well, uh, it's funny because we're, we're, in the, uh, we're in the period of uh, uh, students making decisions about what's uh, prospective students deciding where they're going to go. So I've gotten this, uh, you know, what's the difference between Cleveland and, and all these other schools and what makes it different and why did it end up there? Um, well, when, uh, I think it's a combination of things. One is uh, we are an industrial hub, have been an industrial hub. Uh, design has been very important, and there was demand here, so this program grew. So the, the DNA has existed for 60 plus years. Uh, and and, and uh, when you've got, when you have something around that long, it's easy to maintain momentum. So, so that's one, we do have history on our side. Um, the next thing is that uh, the, the program is unique in that it's, it's uh, a lot of design programs might be part of an engineering program or a, or a architecture program. Uh, this is part of an art school. There's a lot of energy there. Uh, CIA students are seen as, the design students are seen as very innovative and it really is kind of the synergy with the, with the fine arts programs. Um, we have uh, the luxury of space. All, all the students have their own studio space that is in a larger, you know, there, there are dedicated studio spaces where students work together. When I leave the classroom, uh, I may spend a half an hour one-on-one -on -one time with a student, 
they spend hours with each other. They teach each other new things. The, um, th and the students that teach learn what they know, but even it reinforces what they learn. The, uh, the students on the re re receiving end, after I leave, the learning keeps going on. So it's a really dynamic environment. Um, and, you know, why Cleveland? Well, you know what? We had space. And so the, the studios are big and, and all the students have space. So, you know, that's an advantage. Um, the, uh, all our faculty are practicing designers. We don't have a whole lot of traditional academics. So we're all out there doing what we do, understanding how it works, and trying to do it at the leading edge. So um, I'm, we're lucky. I, I, I can't point to anything else. We have all the combinations of the right things. Was that another question? Um, I guess my question is, and I, I apologize if you've covered this already. I walked in a little late, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. uh, I find this very fascinating, but I can't necessarily get involved from the top-down level. So what? How can I get involved from like the grassroots up level to, I guess, help the, the design district? What can I do as just a citizen of Cleveland? Well, um, it, it's uh, one thing that already happened after the announcements and uh, sort of progress began is a, a lot of questions came up about, uh, you know, where should I, where should I locate my, uh, you know, I want to build a, a web, commercial web business. Where should I put it? Well, you should put it here. Uh, I, I know that's not, uh, you know, it building a, uh, you know, looking for space for a hacker organization. This might be the place to do it. We're trying to create a, uh, a diverse, dynamic, creative environment that's sort of clustered where uh, things that are happening in one organization affect another. Uh, so that's, that's one thing. If, if you're looking for space or someone else is looking for space, look here. Um, another one is um, the, uh, I, I've noticed that there are times when the momentum starts to slow and it's, uh, it's everybody thinks it's a great idea but then uh, on the political level but then they get distracted with something else. Well, uh, I, I think from a grassroots level people need to start saying, where is it? What are you doing? Because I have to tell you, sometimes uh, you know, I, I feel like I walked in with a golden goose and the city kicked it out. And they haven't, I'm exaggerating. But uh, sometimes there's a, a lack of a sense of urgency and grassroots movements help maintain the sense of urgency. Um, it, you know, uh, it was probably uh, maybe four months ago Rubbermaid announced they're moving to North Carolina. Uh, the, that's our that's our, that's a core industry for this region that is, that is slowly going to dissipate if we don't recognize that it's important and invest in it and put the infrastructure in place that's going to build it. Other questions? Um, I might have missed this if you covered it, but um, is there like a phased rollout of this, or is it going to happen like overnight, or what's the time frame? Um, well, the, the state the Avenue going to look like that. Yeah, uh, the stage that we're in now, um, the because a, a, an important part of this is the clustering of activities. So the the uh, you know the market could drive what happens. So. Uh, if the market drives, w one person's going to be 10 blocks away from the other, and that's not clustering. That doesn't give you the dynamic that you want. So the, what we're working on now before we can sign companies up and start pounding nails is uh, we have to develop a master lease agreement where we identify a cluster of pro immediate properties for showrooms that make it the right kind of experience. Um, the, uh, once that master lease agreement's developed, we understand what incent incentives are available, then we can start to sit down and sign agreements with companies. So the phase that we're in now is that um, clustering the real estate. The, uh, the, the next phase would be signing up companies, and you know, we're looking at uh, hopefully five or six companies initially, and that really starts the momentum. Um, and, you know, we're hoping by the end of summer we're in that situation. And hopefully by the end of the year we're in construction. And the, the goal is that as the silver line is completed, as construction on Euclid ends, then 
this is sort of coming to life. Any other questions? I have one more, um, and this might throw the rails off the track a little bit, but uh, okay. I'm more of a musical person. I get very into what I call the, the auditory arts, I guess. Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of wondering what kind of crossover benefits might come out of uh, a fairly visual-oriented art and design district right. for the musical side of, of the arts culture in Cleveland. The, um, th there are seven or eight design districts in the U.S. Most of them are... Um, architecture, decorating, furniture. So uh, consumer product design was a differentiator. It's, it's, uh, it draws on existing assets. It's a clear differentiator from the, the Pittsburgh design district, which is its furnishings. Uh, so the, the idea of concentrating on visual and product design is just a differentiator. If, if this isn't uh, architecture, graphics, interior design, uh, furniture, art, studios, culinary, music. If it's not, if it's not a creative hub, it's not going to have the effect, the desired effect. Um, we're, um, and in fact, even in product design, the it's gone beyond the uh, the object, and it's the experience that people are interested in. And, and that sound, and it's, uh, and it's visual, and it's tactile, and it's, it's a lot of things. So it needs to have all those inputs. I had a quick question. Yep. I'm not sure of the relevance of it, but do you feel that uh, Cleveland's geographical location may have a huge part in it? As far as it being between, like, uh, Chicago, between Akron, between New York, all the other different big cities? Um, I, there was a slide I had in here that, um, that I actually took out. Uh, there's, uh, if you drew a 300 mile radius around Cleveland, Cleveland at the center, there, uh, almost half of all the product design programs in the country are within that 300 miles. Uh, and it, actually a couple in Canada as well. So the, you know, there's, it's, it's not a mistake that all of those product design programs are in that. It's where a lot of industry was. It was where, it was a population center. So um, it, it, uh, it just, just as a starting point, there's an enormous amount of talent. Uh, it, when I go to Industrial Design Society conferences, about a third of all the attendees at the conferences, are f they either went to school in Ohio, they're from Ohio, um, they work in Ohio. It's, um, it, this should be the design state. I mean, we produce a third of all the designers in the country and we're, what, well, a small percentage of the population. So, um, so e even that, there, there's something, again, back to the DNA, there's something in the soil that's, uh, that's breeding designers. Uh, yep. Forgive me for using leverage as a verb, but at what level can you leverage that, um, the, the Clevelandness of the field? You know, when you're at a, an international conference or something like that, just throw in a couple of in jokes and, <laughs> and make, you know, make all those other people in the audience feel like, oh man, I should have been in Cleveland. <laughs> and and, and, and to, to what level might, you know, things like that already play uh, a role in, in those sorts of conferences and, and events like that already? Well, I'll tell you, when this was announced, uh, it, within days, it was, it was on the, the blogs for the IDSA, you know, all these design organization websites. Well, actually, I should say, I mean, it, it was within 24 hours. And then 24 hours after that, we were already getting the, the emails from alumni who, or, 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 or Ohioans who had moved away and said, you basically said, wow, this is a reason to come back. So the, uh, and there are a lot of people out there who are looking for a reason to come back, but they're in Boston, and Boston's cool, and there's a nightlife, and, you know, all these cool firms to work at, and they're, they're looking this way, saying, well, when, when is that culture going to happen? Well, this gives them enough hope where when they start making the return trip, they're going to build that that same kind of environment. Um, the, uh, it, the, the funny thing about the Milan of the Midwest, that was, it, it, it was kind of a joke that I made three or four years ago. 
And, uh, and people didn't laugh. They came up and said, hey, how do we do that? Um, so uh, 